A ball is thrown directly upwards at 5 meters per second. The ball is released 1.5 meters above the ground. How fast is the ball moving when it lands on the ground? As always, let's read the problem a second time, pick out the important information, and draw a picture. For projectile motion, some important information could be the initial and final positions, velocities, or times. A ball is thrown directly upwards at 5 meters per second. The ball is released 1.5 meters above the ground. How fast is the ball moving when it lands on the ground? Let's draw a picture. The ball starts at some height above the ground with an upwards velocity, so it moves up some distance and then falls down and hits the ground. For most problems, we'll say that up is the positive y direction and y equals zero at the ground. We'll say the initial point is when the ball starts at this height and the final point is when it hits the ground. So the initial y position is positive 1.5 meters and the final y position is zero meters. The initial velocity is positive five meters per second, which is also the initial y velocity because it points in the y direction. The question says how fast is the ball moving when it hits the ground, which means we're looking for the final vertical speed, which is the magnitude or absolute value of the velocity. Since this is projectile motion, the acceleration due to gravity is g, 9.8 meters per second squared, which acts downwards. Since we chose up to be positive, then the vertical acceleration, ay, would be negative g, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And since the ball only moves vertically, this is 1d projectile motion, and we only use the variables and equations for the y direction. Also, we mentioned this in the lesson videos, but projectile motion really describes the motion of the object's center of mass, which is just a point. So we could just draw a dot to represent the ball. If you do draw the object, ignore the fact that it has some width and height, and just think about the position of its center. So now we have a picture, and we know which values were given and what we're trying to find. You can include the values in the picture, or just write them somewhere else like we did on the left. So next, what equations can we use to find the final speed of the ball? Let's look at the kinematic equations in the y direction. Remember, since there's vertical acceleration, we don't really use the equation for average velocity. The last equation has the variable we're looking for, and we have values for everything else, so we can use that equation. We could use the third equation, but we would need to know the time it hits the ground and we could use the fourth equation to find that time because we know all the other variables. In some physics problems, there's more than one way to solve it. So let's try both. First, let's use this equation to find the final speed of the ball. We plug in five meters per second for the initial y velocity, negative 9.8 meters per second squared for the acceleration, zero meters for the final y position, and 1.5 meters for the initial y position. We can take the square root of both sides, plug that into our calculator, and we get 7.38 meters per second for the final speed of the ball when y equals zero meters. You can think of this equation as using speed instead of velocity because v is squared in the equation. So even if the velocity is negative, it'll be positive when you square it. So this answer is the final speed of the ball, which is what we want. The final velocity would be negative 7.38 meters per second because the ball would be moving in the negative y direction. Now let's solve this using the other equations. We know the initial velocity and the acceleration, but we need to know the time the ball hits the ground, which we can find using this equation. The final y position is zero meters, the initial position is 1.5 meters, the initial velocity is five meters per second, and the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We can either plug this into a calculator that can automatically solve for t, or we need to use the quadratic formula. In that case, we need to simplify and rearrange this equation so it's in this form. 
You can move things around so the terms are in the same order, but the important part is that one side of the equation is zero, and we have three coefficients, or numbers, a, b, and c. a is the number multiplied by t squared, which is negative 4.9, b is the number multiplied by t, which is 5, and c is the number all by itself, which is 1.5. The terms have to be added together, which is why a is negative 4.9. Then we can plug a, b, and c into the quadratic formula. When we calculate that using the plus sign and the minus sign, we get two values for t, negative 0.24 seconds and positive 1.26 seconds. We covered this in the lesson videos, but we're going to ignore negative time values, so the time when the ball hits the ground is positive 1.26 seconds. Now we can plug this value into the other equation to find the final velocity. The initial velocity is 5 meters per second, the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and the time is 1.26 seconds. That gives us negative 7.35 meters per second for the final velocity. Now let's check that our answer makes sense. First of all, did we get the same answer both times? Actually, the first answer we got was 7.38 meters per second, so why are they different? Well, we found the first answer by plugging in exact values that we were given. For the second answer, we calculated the time ourselves and we rounded that to two decimal places, and then plugged that into another equation. If we rounded time to three decimal places instead, we'd get 7.38 meters per second. So if you're rounding a number in the middle of a problem, make sure you keep enough decimal places so your final answer is accurate. Or, if possible, keep everything as variables and only plug in numbers at the end. Now let's check our answer. The question is asking for the final speed, which is the absolute value of velocity, and that's what we got. The next thing to check is the units. Our answer is in meters per second, which is the unit for speed. The problem only used meters and seconds, it didn't use other units like kilometers or hours, and we don't have to convert anything, so the units check out. Finally, does the magnitude of the answer make sense? We got the same value using two different methods, so it's probably right. The ball started with a speed of 5 meters per second upwards, so when it hits the ground, it's definitely moving and the final speed isn't zero. Should it be greater or less than 5 meters per second? Based on what we learned in the lesson videos, the ball would have the same speed at the same height on the way up and down. So when it's at 1.5 meters on the way down, its speed would be 5 meters per second downwards. Then it falls further and keeps accelerating, so its speed at the ground should be greater than 5 meters per second, which is what we got. Once we cover more topics, we could also try solving this using other concepts, like the conservation of energy, and make sure we get the same answer.